The International City County Management Association is the leading association of local government professionals dedicated to creating and sustaining thriving communities throughout the world. For more than 100 years, ICMA has been focused on the stewardship of democratic principles and the efficient and transparent use of public resources. And we are here to bring it all right to you. This is ICMA TV. Hello and welcome back to ICMA TV. I'm your host, Atria Godfrey from Portland, Oregon. We are bringing you the very latest from the 2021 ICMA Annual Conference. We are halfway through this year's exciting annual meeting, but there is still much more to cover as this week is dedicated to developing strategies, relationships, and a foundation to best serve our members of local government. We will hear from keynote speaker, Claire Haydar, what we're living in now is chaos, but it's not going to change. It's not going to go away. Take a tour to see how our own local governments are overcoming obstacles and enacting change in their own communities. We want to make sure that we're poised in a perfect position for the next development boom. And today we meet our first trailblazer, Jacqueline Bazuto. Being online, being productive online, and engaging with residents, it's more important than ever, I would say. Remember, you can see all of the latest ICMA TV news, videos, and interviews on your time by checking out our dedicated page on the ICMA website and on our YouTube channel and Twitter feed. We begin today with our sit down interview with Claire Hader, CEO of Wonder and Pattern. First time to ICMA, welcome. Hi, Audrey, it's so good to be here today, thank you. Of course, so you just wrapped up your keynote address, the title of which is, The Future of Work is Now, You Should Really Give a Damn. I absolutely love the title of this speech. Give us a little bit of information about what it was like for people who weren't able to attend. So, Audrey, I think what I try to capture in this talk for the audience is that you know, if you look at all of the issues bubbling to the top right now, defunding of the police, the big COVID pandemic, you know what I mean? There's like hundreds of like social justice issues. There's so many things right now. Those are all symptomatic of a really, really serious problem. And it's actually a very basic problem, which is we're living in a time deficit right now. Such a great point. You know, and I think the whole point that I wanted to really convey today to the audience was get back to the basics. If you are a city leader where you talk about, you know, bowing down to popular opinion, so obviously you do want to make those that you serve happy. Yes. But at the same time, like you said, we need to operate with facts and, you know, science-backed statistics. Yes. How, how do you juggle that? How do you make both sides happy? I think ultimately, and this is also one of the points that I made in the talk, which made me smile because it actually, you know, there was a bit of applause from the audience that came up was just, ruthlessly prioritize everything that people in cities are making a noise about is not actually worth making a noise about and ultimately if you look at what the main job of a city leader is it's to lead and to lead doesn't mean you get distracted with every distraction that somebody in the city is shouting about you know it's like you stay focused on on that end goal you also say work is chaotic that is a good thing for type A people though, who love a structure, love a routine, maybe like myself, how can we embrace the theory that work is chaotic and that's okay? Mm. So I actually took it right back to the science, the science of chaos theory. And if you look at what chaos theory teaches us, it's chaos is actually not chaos. It's actually a highly structured network. It's very, very, like all the different nodes in the network are connected. And because one node is changing and evolving, it ripples across and the rest of the network feel the change. And so where we need to change our mindset around that chaos is, is we need to realize that it's not chaotic. We need to stop trying to change it. You know what I mean? It's what we're living in now is chaos, but it's not gonna change. It's not gonna go away. I know that's hard for type A people like you and me yes. to hear, <laughs> but ultimately it is the reality. All right, Claire Hader, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been so good being with you, Autria. Well, there's nothing more chaotic than the rate of expansion in one of Canada's fast growing cities, Leduc. Not only does the city have a thriving business sector, but its amenities meet the needs of a growing region and local organizations. Let's head just 10 minutes south of Edmonton to see how Leduc is doing it.
I would describe Leduc as a vibrant, thriving community ready to take that next step. We're 10 minutes away from Edmonton International Airport. We're 10 minutes away from 3,000 hotel rooms and we're about 20 kilometers south of the city of Edmonton. We're along the Kiwi 2, the major highway corridor between Edmonton and Calgary, and we have rail. We have everything that a business needs to succeed. You hear real estate agents talk a lot about location, 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 and that's what this place has. So that proximity here, you just, you, you can't find anywhere else. Uh, coupled with the fact that the, the community itself is very skilled, very well educated, very diverse. Uh, some natural resources in terms of parks and facilities. You, you just can't find a better community. Now let's head south, very south, to North Miami Beach, Florida, where the city's philosophy of where people care is promoted through employee pride. Local government leaders there are providing citizens a full range of quality and efficient services to create a better environment to live and work. Let's take a tour. The mayor's vision for North Miami Beach is to just make this a sustainable city, uh, to make sure our residents have growth, um, community growth, um, economic stability, and um, just eat, live, work, and play. So North Miami Beach is a unique city in the fact that it's a great place to live, work, and play. I'm definitely looking forward to implementing the mayor's CRA plan for economic development. You know, in Miami, development big all over, but definitely in North Miami Beach, we have some amazing views in North Miami Beach. So the economic development is what's gonna drive here. Some of the other cities, some of the newer cities are really developing, so now it's time to come back to some of the older cities and to make that development happen here. And North Miami Beach is really poised in a perfect position for the next development boom. The need to feel connected has never been stronger in our increasingly disconnected pace of life, but doing so while staying safe is an ongoing dilemma and one Tim Rusholte says should be a top priority. Tim Rusholte, thanks for joining us here in the studio today. So let's jump right into it. We mentioned the desire to be as connected as possible, but obviously maintaining safety is a top priority, as you say. How do we accomplish both? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, being connected, one, has never been easier with social media and all the access points that we have with technology, but also what we realize is that the connectedness of you know, being face to face with individuals is also important. You know, when we think about safety, we have to have safety relative to these days of COVID, physical safety, but we also have to make sure that we maintain online as well as when we're face to face security when it comes to our personal information and when we think about cybersecurity and the way in which we manage our business within municipalities across the country we have to be increasingly vigilant when it comes to cybersecurity threats which oftentimes we think about data and online data but it's also physical information physical id identification of information of individuals as well as the cities and counties and municipalities that they work in we have to make sure that we maintain that vigilance to make sure that we are maintaining a level of safety for our data as well as our own personal health and fitness and through your work and your research you have identified a leadership development gap what is that there is a leadership development gap. You know, we recognize across all municipalities in the country, there is existing leaders that know that they've got to get better and emerging leaders that know that they've got to get ready. You know, when we think about the issues that we face today, many of these issues were not faced just a few years ago, especially 10 years ago, but even more recently than that. And what made us successful in the past as leaders may not necessarily make us successful today. And so our leaders are recognizing that they've got a gap in ability to address the most pressing issues today that they face. And so therefore there is this need, again, for connectivity. How do we connect with other individuals? How do we connect with best practice research? How do we connect with how we're going to address our problems today so that we can be successful and deliver the services within our cities, our counties, and our states. And you've been able to identify three essential ways to try to correct that? Access, relevance, and efficiency. 
we need to make sure that we have access to those best practices. And so we have to make sure that we have a level of access to individuals, organizations, and research that provide the understanding of what our best practices today, what are going to help us today and in the future. We also need to make sure that those best practices are absolutely relevant to what we're doing. You know, what is best practice for one city or municipality may not necessarily be best practice for another one. So relevance becomes really important. And then that third piece is efficiency. We have to make sure that as we're filling this leadership gap, helping existing leaders get better and emerging leaders get ready, that we make it as efficient as possible. Because let's face it, these leaders of cities and counties are extremely busy today. And we can't layer on top hours and hours and hours of additional personal training. We have to make it easy. We have to make it efficient. We have to integrate it into those busy schedules so that the information, that training can be consumed and immediately applied. So access, relevance, and efficiency are really key variables in making existing leaders better and emerging leaders ready. All right, Tim, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Harnessing the power of innovation and technology is on full display among the Northwest 33 Council of Governments just outside of Columbus, Ohio. This innovation hub is an ecosystem of smart infrastructure and living labs. The Beta District, as it's called, is one of the few places on the planet where four season infrastructure and policies are in place for beta testing automated vehicle technology and other smart mobility systems. Let's check it out. The Beta District is an innovative ecosystem. It's an environment that stretches beyond Columbus, Ohio, from the city of Dublin, through the city of Marysville, onto East Liberty, along the US 33 highway. The goal of the Beta District is to provide an open playground. The Council of Governments feels very strongly that they want to create a space where innovative companies can really deploy the future. The overall value of the Beta District really is endless. We have a lot of efforts going on that are geared towards improving safety, improving lives, improving experiences, and also we're able to leverage all of the innovation and the buzz around the Beta District for economic development purposes. What's good for Dublin is good for Marysville and Union County and really the entire region. This is the area in the country that will be the next frontier for technology development and technology-centric innovation. And it's us finally putting ourselves on the map and saying this is where you want to be. Now to our first Trailblazer Spotlight and Jacqueline Pazulto, CEO of SeedX, was named as a Trailblazer at this year's ICMA Annual Conference and she joins us now to talk a little bit more about that. First off, congratulations. Thank what does it so mean much. to you to be named Trailblazer at this year's Annual Conference? It's a huge honor to be named a Trailblazer, especially this year coming out of COVID or still going through the pandemic um, and being able to speak on a topic that's so important and so often overlooked, I think, by our local governments, which is um, being online, being productive online and engaging with residents and constituents and tourists and everyone who, who uh, you know, interacts with your city in an online manner. Um, so that, that's a really, you know, huge honor to be able to speak on that right now when it's more important than ever, I would say. True, so you have been recognized nationally for your skills in online marketing and advertising. What is the secret to creating a dynamic online presence that's memorable? The secret is, I would say, just being really dedicated to it. Um, I think the biggest thing that holds people back is fear of the digital realm of technology of learning um, and really, you know, once you kind of get past that and you embrace the technology, um, it, it's, you know, it, it's so worthwhile. Um, and I think just kind of making your physical presence feel the same online. Mm -hmm. So if I go to Portland or Nashville, that feeling that I get, whatever, is strong, whatever the strengths of the city are, um, I should feel that when I go onto your website and when I interact with you. 
What would you say to local leaders who say, you know, we've got a website, we've got all the social media pages, but we just don't seem to get any traction. What typically is the big problem? I think the problem is just being focused on what you're trying to do. I think a really great example of a city that's done an awesome job online is uh, the city of Miami. Mayor Suarez has a Twitter following and he specifically chose to go on to Twitter and to speak to the entrepreneurial community about startups and um, bring them over to Miami and kind of talk about why Miami is a great place for that. Um, and it's led to so much growth in their entrepreneurial community there over the last two years, it's crazy. So I think really just understanding what are my goals for this year, what's the best platform for them, and being dedicated and not kind of doing too much of everything with, with um, little motivation or little intention behind it. So kind of pick a lane and then really focus on that. Yep. Wonderful. Well, Jacqueline, congratulations again on being named a Trailblazer Thank you this so year. Much. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Let's see now how one California community is already showcasing just how dynamic their digital capabilities are. Carlsbad, California is leading the way when it comes to smart cities and has become a model for harnessing the power of technology and innovation to provide a superior level of service and foster a highly connected community. People are the driving force behind everything that we're doing. How do we make this a place that works incredibly well while also having the empathy, inclusion, and human aspects to everything that we invest in? We need to constantly be evolving, constantly be checking in with our community, and make sure that they have a way to communicate with us in a way that's convenient for them. Carlsbad uses data to determine how we can provide services in a more equitable fashion to marginalized communities in our city. Not only are we more connected to the community in the city of Carlsbad because of the digital transformation, but we're able to solve and investigate crimes more efficiently. We continue to have one of the lowest per capita infection rates in the region, and that's a credit to data-driven decision-making. Every city cares, but not every city goes to the level of care that the city of Carlsbad does. With a look at how ICMA navigated this unprecedented year, ICMA President Jim Malloy sits down with us now in studio. Whew, what a year. It's been a crazy year. It really has. So how did you guys pivot? I'm sure as an incoming president, you have all of these thoughts and ideas and goals of things you would like to tackle, and then boom. We had a lot of different goals for the year, and um, you know, because uh, <clears throat> the, me the, the members of the board are, are all pretty dedicated, we had to pivot and change everything that we were doing from the conference last year, which was originally scheduled to be in Toronto, which everybody was looking forward to. Um, ICMA staff had to pivot immediately and uh, develop a online forum for that conference and deal with all the technological issues involved with that and the format of that and everything. And uh, then it was a matter of also our board meetings. Our board meetings are quarterly and they typically, we fly on Thursday, we meet all day Friday, we meet all day Saturday, then we fly home on Sundays. And so what we really had to do is try to consolidate our meetings down into a, uh, a one day, mostly six to eight hour Zoom meeting, which is really, really tough. So what would you say were some of the greatest needs that you found from your members? I think the greatest needs were the ability to engage. People were used to getting together in a format like this and be able to speak with their colleagues and talk about problems, talk through problems, or if they're going through some sort of stress where they work, to have that conversation. It's a lot harder to do that in a little tiny box on a computer screen. Any lessons learned from this past year? Do you have a proud moment or something that this pandemic taught you? We were all in a, in a whole different boat together this last year, and so the, just having an extreme amount of flexibility um, has really um, been something that I think we all need to keep carrying forward, because um, there are some good lessons out of the whole thing. We, we saw greater community participation in our meetings. Um, there was an opportunity for people 
to join some of our meetings that otherwise wouldn't have been able to join our meetings because of travel requirements and stuff. And so there are some, there are some uh, good things that came out of it, but I think just the fact that ICMA continued to provide resources and services. We pivoted for a conference last year that was wholly virtual, and then we pivoted this year to a mixed hybrid virtual in-person conference. Um, that we're really meeting the needs of our members and we continue to provide that professional development source and a resource for information for our members on all, all topics relating to local government, that that's really probably the best thing is that, that I'm proudest of ICMA and the executive director and the staff is that we didn't miss a beat. We continued providing ICMA services as our members have come to expect it over the years and I, I think that's really the most important thing that we did over the last year. Absolutely. Well, and on that note, congratulations on a successful, albeit bizarre year. Bizarre year, yes. <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. And now to the man assuming the role, ICMA President-elect Troy Brown talks with us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I want to get started with something that your predecessor said about you as you are taking the helm. He said, quote, Troy Brown brings thoughtful leadership at a critical time for ICMA. First off, what does it mean to you to have that high praise? Well, Jim's an amazing president. Uh, he led the association through an incredibly difficult time. And now is the opportunity to really think big and, and think about the future and where it puts us at this moment in time as we move this association forward. So that does require some difficult conversations as we reset and restart, uh, but you also have to be thoughtful, as Jim mentioned, and it, it means very high praise coming from someone like Jim. So as we look ahead to the future of ICMA, what do you envision? You know, I envision, first of all, I'm excited about the opportunity to restart. This is a very unique moment in time for ICMA. So we really have the opportunity to rethink everything that we do from the ground up, and I'm looking forward to what that means for our membership, what that means for our, our member due structure, what that means for our international members and our program offerings as well. So I'm looking forward to being part of that journey and part of that discussion as we retool the organization. I'm looking forward to it. What does an ICMA look like under a Troy Brown presidency? Well, I can tell you that it definitely doesn't look uh, as it looked last year. <laughs> I think under a Troy Brown presidency, one of the things I really want to do is try and reconnect with the members. One of the benefits of being an ICMA member is having a close connection with the association. And because of the pandemic, we really missed a lot of that. And that was one of the things that we experienced as a loss. So I want to get back out into the States. I want to get back out with the members and sit down and talk with them and understand what their issues are and help them, you know, get the resources that they need and get the feedback that we need to move the association forward. And finally, before I let you go, what do you anticipate to possibly be your biggest challenge and your greatest opportunity? You know, I think the biggest challenge that we're going to have to face is what is our due structure? You know, we, we've been going through a conversation over the past several months on the future of the due structure. Is it aligned with our mission to invite and bring in all the members from across the association? That's going to be a lift. Uh, that's certainly a need that we have coming out of the pandemic and the economic recession. So I'm excited about that. One of the things that I'm really excited about is how do we provide programs and offerings moving forward? You know, we learned a lot through the loss that we experienced through the pandemic. One of the things that we learned is people still need ICMA there as a resource, and they can get it now on their own terms. You know, maybe we do hybrid learning, maybe we do in-person learning, but I'm excited about putting the infrastructure in place to be able to use that, that structure moving forward well beyond the pandemic. So we're certainly going to take a step. We're not going to get the whole bite, but I'm excited about the future. A lot to look forward to. And congratulations Thank on you. your new role. Thank, Thank you. you. To Albany, Oregon now, a small but steadily growing city, Albany fosters a pioneering future through an innovative and entrepreneurial business environment. As they honor their past, they are connecting to their future. Let's see how. The city of Albany is a small town it retains a small town feel while it embraces the future. And it's growing and the quality of life here with all that we have available to us. It's a wonderful place to live, to work and to play. Businesses come here because we have talented people that work here and live here. We have a junior college that will train employees. We want it to be really in a place where people feel that they are having a balance in their lives, they're closer to nature, they have more opportunities to get out there and experience new things that you don't really get to do in a big metropolitan. 
Albany Parks and Recreation System is an award-winning system. And one of its signature events is the Northwest Art and Air Festival, which brings about 60,000 people to see big name musical acts. And then of course, what it's probably best known for are the balloons that come and float through the valley. So many things excite me about Albany. The businesses are coming here are great historic venues. This is a great place to bring your family and raise your children. Hi attendees, Jeremy Figaton, ICMA Director of Conferences and Sponsorships. It's been a great week here at the 2021 ICMA Annual Conference in Portland, and there's still more to come. Make sure to catch our roundtable discussion on best ways to use ARPA funds. And for the first time administrators, we've got you covered. A special session on how to build positive relationships in your new role is happening tomorrow morning. It's our final full day together. Let's make it a great one. Thanks, Jeremy. Sounds great. And thanks for joining us for day three of ICMA TV. We have our final full day of the 2021 ICMA Annual Conference, which is shaping up to be one of our busiest days yet. Don't forget, you can go back and see all of the ICMA TV content on your own time by checking out the news and highlights on the dedicated ICMA website or on our YouTube channel or Twitter feed. Thanks so much for joining us today, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.